Can a putter shaft make such a difference that your putting goes from eh to uh? Let's find out next. Welcome back to the Mick Golf Shop. Jim McCleary here, and this is the Mick Golf Channel where we talk about club head reviews, club head repairs, and club fittings. Club head, how about we just go with golf club reviews and golf club repairs? and golf club fittings. How about that? All right, if you would like subscribe, hit that bell down across the bottom because a lot of you folks that watch this don't subscribe and the more subscriber we get, the more that this word reaches everybody. Thank you. Next is, is that we have a live stream. We do a live stream on Mondays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time, 17.30 for you guys across the pond. And we talk about the same stuff, it's just live. The, I'm going to tell you, the last couple of, last four or five of these things have been extraordinarily lively and it's been pretty awesome. Very, very happy with it. Putter shafts. All right, putter shafts. The, in a lot of the live streams that I do, and I'll get, I get questions via the email, is it, does a BGT shaft really work? First, I, was, I had to figure out what in the devil a BGT shaft was. I had no idea. And so, of course, we start looking around. We go to BGT and sure enough, Breakthrough Golf Technology. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And that's how we started off with the first review of the wedge shaft, which is like right there. All right. And turns out it worked out pretty good, right? Turns out it worked out pretty good. Uh, very tight in every, disper in every category, it went tighter. So I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. So I'm in talking with the guys about this, I was like, hey, you know, this is pretty cool. I hear you guys got a putter shaft and they kind of, you know, rolling their eyes and doing this and going, you know, that's kind of what we're known for, right? And I'm like, no, I didn't know. Like, oh, okay, How, can you send me one? They said, well, sure. So I got a BGT putter shaft. So how does one test a putter shaft? Therein lies the question. Well, first let's talk about the putter shaft. Number one, the, the BGT, is, the model is called the stability shaft. Within the stability shaft family, there are two. There's a tour model, which comes in black. It comes in white. It also comes in fire, which I think the paint job on that's pretty cool. The other model family is called the carbon weave family. The carbon weave family is actually a different make than the tours, and we'll go over that here in a minute, but they have uh, the, you can see the weave. It's like a, a clear poly that's on the outside so you can see the interweaving as opposed to a full paint job like you saw on the tours. Plus the little adapter piece that goes on the end, the little, we'll call it the ferrule, but it's part of an, a, 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 an aluminum adapter piece. It comes in colors. You got a gold, a blue, a red, and a gray. All right. Now the difference in this, these two shafts is the carbon is 125 grams. Other than that, the rest, are, the rest of the specifics are, or the specifications are the same. 37 inches, one degree of torque, which is just crazy, and they're very, very stiff. Now, on the Tour, it is 37 inches, and it's 102 grams, and it is extraordinarily stiff. And that's what it comes. They're both 600 butts, and they can put these different tips in. So the last part of this is, is that how do you do this? Well, you have the body and it's graphite with the adapter, aluminum adapter piece, and maybe some stiffeners depending on the make and model. And then you have the tip section. And the tip section gets inserted into the adapter and then that, and then you glue that as a putter shaft onto the putter. Now, as we all know, they have the putter shafts that have the the posts that the, the shaft goes over top of. You also have the regular ones where they go into the hosel. And so you have to have these different kinds. So you gotta know what you're ordering in order to get the right one. Plus there's double bins. And here as of late, I've seen some of these really crazy bins for those heel mounted, uh, where you got the whole, the whole mallet and that balances here and it inserts here and curves up where the face is sitting right here. Something weird. But they, I mean, they do make them. So you gotta know what you're ordering in order to put that in there. So I did. Now, to further isolate the shaft, to further isolate the shaft, my gamer's a Makefield center shafted putter, so it's a straight end, so we don't have to worry about the double bendy stuff. 
And so I called them and they make their putters via serial numbers. So each one has a specific lie, loft, weight, all that kind of stuff specific to that one serial number. So I gave my serial number, asked them to send me another head made to the exact specifications. They did. And I put the same grip on it. So same head, same grip, different shaft. That's all it was. All right. And, and so we went to go testing. So let's go see. All right. Using the Capto, I captured a lot of data on the differences. Now, uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of numbers that pop up on the screen of which we are not going to talk about this particular time because this is a shaft comparison, not a putter fitting or Capto tutorial at this particular time. But you can, it, the thing here is that it can show you just exactly what this thing is capturing. And if you take the time to analyze each and every single putt, that you can you almost go mad because they're just so much. So we're going to start off with, with me. And then we are going to change this to the third. The, so the Makefield left-handed is the original. The left-handed two is the, is the one with the new shaft in it. So we have 49 strokes in this one. That's because I've been practicing with it before. So the last 10 strokes. So if we go down to 39, and we're just comparing the last 10 strokes, this is what we see. All right, so if we do, if you see a lot of green here, that means it did pretty good. If you see some red, it's unacceptable. If you see some yellow, that means that uh, you're in between. Okay, that's just what it is. So if we look at some values, this is what I'm talking about going mad. These are all the parameters that this uh, machine monitors. And you can see uh, my liangle needs a little help. My, uh, my hitting it on center needs a little help. And then finding the middle of the face with this thing needs a little help. Now that was that one. And as you can see, the numbers changing. Uh, the, the white ones are actually just measured numbers. But I mean, sometimes they're really good, sometimes they're not, right? And that's what we look for in through all of that. So if we go back and we look at the the icon. Now these are the icon values where they have the the pictures versus just the numbers. And in this particular shot of the last, there's the last one. So you can see on my track on here, I wasn't as good as I was on the one before it, and then back to bad, and then good. So my track on here, uh, my my out to in, and this is the reason why I miss a lot of my putts to the right, and it just feels normal to me, and that's the reason why. When I feel like I'm putting out and I hit it straight, I get a, a level of confusion. And that is where I need to work right there on basically all of my putts. All right. So the last thing that just kind of show you some cool stuff of what this thing does. If we look at it from a downhill and we play one, uh, and this is just at half speed. Let me go back. There you go. This thing's there's left-handed. The the putter's backwards, but I'm swinging left-handed. And that was the last one. Now, if you want to see the or the first one, that was 44. There's 48. So online, pretty decent, right? That's just what it's all about. Okay. So if we go back here, uh, one of the big things is that one of the big things is this. Uh, so I can compare all the different ones, and these are just the primary ones, like face change, loft change, lie change, uh, shaft change, the putt kernel is where the, the, the back end of the putter's at, and, and all these times. And as you can see, there's not a lot of red, there's some yellow to work on, and, and, and those particular things, and that's kind of what we're looking for, right? Now if we go, all right, so we see all of these things, and we're like, well, okay, that's great. What is it all doing? Well, a person that's been trained on the Capto can easily break a lot of these things down for you to tell you where you need to work. However, this is probably the biggest thing right here. We're going we're gonna to go with, this is the first putter. Now, this is all 49 putts, or 39 putts, sorry. And if you look, it says... 21 to the right, 18 in the hole. So almost a 50-50 spot. And you see a lot of them going right here. That one's kind of an outlier. I don't know how that one even got in there. but that So that's where they're at, right? 
Now, the rook, how did the make field two do? Well, two on the right and eight in the hole. And there you go. So that in its own self should tell you how well that the shaft did. All right, so it did work pretty good. The stability part of it is really where we want to go in the handling and in the trembling part of it. And what I'm looking for here is, is there a lot of red? And the answer is no, not on that one, just at the very end, but that's just at impact. And we look at that, there's hardly, oh, there was one. And we get there. So what it is, it's looking like I'm very comfortable swinging that particular putter. All right, so if I change over to the left-handed one, and we see how that line has balanced itself out a little bit more for handling. Now for the trembling part of it, okay. We're not seeing a lot, right? And that's what it's all about. All righty, so when it's all said and done, we made more putts with a uh, stability shaft than we did with the normal shaft. And what I'm finding out is that my putting path is a little outside in, and it needs to be a little bit more straightened out, and that will help me find the middle of the putter. So let's go back and talk about it some more. All right, so huh, how about that? I never once in a million years ever considered this to be a thing. I knew it existed, well, but it was a putt, right? And I didn't think, well, yeah, they whack, you know, the heads got heavier, sure. Uh, the shafts were very stiff, but apparently there is a wobble factor. Now, after putting with such a putter that is that kind of stiff and watching and watching and feeling the stability. It is light years and night and day, whatever, you know, whatever kind of thing you want to put on it. But it's almost as if you can see that occurring. And it's really weird. And, and you can see the differences. Now, as we saw that out of 10 putts, I missed two with the, uh, with the gamer and I missed zero with the other one. Now, as the story goes with this, just so you know, when I got the shaft, I started gluing it all together. When I got it all glued together as a naked shaft, I just grabbed it and I started putting. I made 10 putts in a row with no grip on it. I thought, well, this is going to be interesting. Then I put the grip on it. It got down so they're identical, everything's the same, and I made 10 more putts in a row. Well, uh, this is getting better. Well, then I go, <laughs> I go and I do Another 10, I put the thing down, I come back the next day, because these are all different time frames, and I make 10 more putts. And I said, okay, it's time to really start doing this video. So I put the capto on it, started putting, 10 more putts, right? And, and then I go into one more section, I'm just like, well, I set it down, finish the video, and I do 10 more putts, and I make 9 out of 10. So 49 out of 50. That's a record for me, and you guys know if you've been following, putting has been my weakness, so I am completely excited about this to see, make sure that it's going to be what it is. And, and I know what my things I have to work on in order to make the, the connection or the impact to the putter better and be more accurate, even, even more so. so. So did the stability shaft work? The answer is yeah. Yeah, it worked. It worked great. Right for those guys struggling with a little bit of this on the putter, yeah, it worked fine. Uh, is it is it better than the other one? Yeah, yeah, it is. It works. It works a lot better. Does it look cool? Oh, ho, ho, yeah. There's a cool factor in this one. You know, it's all murdered out. You know, the only thing I've got, I'm considering on uh, blacking out the make field at the grip. That would make it even better. Uh, so we're gonna see. And uh, so and basically, what we're saying is. What the folks at BGT said about the shaft are true, all right? It's up to you to decide whether or not you think it's worth the effort in order to get to that next level of putting, all right? But I'm saying is, is I was talking with my buddy Bob because we were just doing some stuff, is when we put the weight in the back of the thing, we are correcting you. It's overcoming some fast twist muscles. When we put the shaft in, we're overcoming the putter, and now it's all you. Therein lies your difference, okay? So again, as a reminder, we do the live stream, 17.30, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. 
and we talk about the same kind of stuff. Join us. It is a ton of fun. Very informative. At least I think so. <laughs> and be, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right. And we will answer these questions as much as we possibly can. And as always, and going into 2023, let's see your scores go low.